when the idea behind adding tiling to GNOME Show was first introduced a couple of years ago, I didn't actually think much of it. I didn't think it was that great of an idea because if you want tiling, just use a tiling window manager. It makes sense because tiling window managers are so much more customizable than a GNOME extension ever is going to be. So for the most part, over the last two years, I've just kind of poo-pooed it. Like, it's not something that I've ever really decided I even wanted to try because it just doesn't seem all that great of an idea to me. Now, I have tried some of the KWIN scripts for KD Plasma that do the, something similar, and I also think those are kind of janky and not very good. So it, that led me to a, a resistance to even trying the tiling mechanism in Pop! OS simply because I just assumed that it was bad. And... As we all know, you shouldn't assume things. So what I thought I would do today is try it out. Now, I've been messing around with it now for um, off and on for about a day in a virtual machine. And I have some thoughts. So let's go ahead and take a look at Pop! OS. So this is basically just Pop! OS straight out of the box. The only thing I've done is change the dock so that it's not full, you know, full screen. It's just the part in the middle. That's all I've changed is just because I prefer that look. If you want to go through and try tiling in Pop! OS, here's how you do it. You just go up to this little button, which is installed by default, and click this little slider so that it's in the on position. And then as you open up new windows or new applications, you'll see that they are tiled just like you'd expect them to be. Now, if you keep opening up clients, and if I remove my face here, you'll see that the layout looks similar to what you'd expect in BSPWM. And similar to BSPWM, where the client spawns really is determined by what window you're focused on. So if we're focused on this window, we'll see things spawn like that. If we're on this window, like that and so on and so forth. And you can also see that because we're dealing with GUI applications, this is this is GNOME Terminal, and it has a lot of GUI aspects to it. The bar at the top, the title bar, the window decorations, all that stuff. The more clients you add to your desktop here, the harder it gets for it to tile, so you end up with things where things are kind of overlapping. It's messy. Now, it's not anything that's unusual when you when it comes to a tiling window manager. GUI applications oftentimes can only get so small before they won't get any smaller. And that's basically the case on a lot of tiling window managers as well. So that's not a huge deal, but it's definitely something that you'll have to keep in mind. Now, nobody's ever going to go through and try to create a layout like that and expect it to be usable. So it's like that's not a huge deal. It's just, again, something that you'll have to keep in mind. Because if you wanted to go through and resize things like I just did there, you'll see how things are actually overlapping even there because GNOME Terminal can only get so small in one direction. So interestingly, interacting with and moving the clients around is fairly easy. You can go through and do that with a keyboard shortcut. You can also go through and use your mouse if you wanted to use your mouse. And it's kind of cool that you can use your mouse and it allows you to kind of create your own workspace. It's I'd say moving the the clients around with your mouse is kind of like BSPWM's like uh, pre-selection, in, in that it, as you can see, it kind of allows you to determine where it highlights where it's going to go and what position and how big it's going to be, all that stuff. It's not as customizable as pre-selection in BSPWM is, but it's kind of similar. Also, you'll see as, as on the screen is that if you have things overlapping in a certain place, if you try to drag them into like on top of each other, you'll then get tabs, which is very much similar to what you'd see in i3, which is really cool, right? It's not something that I expected to exist. The fact that you can go through and have tabs. Now, if you you noticed when I, I tried to add a third window, it doesn't seem to allow you to have a third window. As far as I can tell, two windows in a tab stack is as much as you can have. I may be doing that wrong, but as far as I can tell, you can only do two. Now, the layout is overall fine. The problem is, other than you know dragging things and customizing, basically making your own layout so that there's you know different widths and different heights and all that stuff, there are no other default layouts that you can select. So you can't select like master stack, you can't select... A centered master or any of that kind of stuff that you'd be able to choose in a like a tiling window manager what you get is the Fibonacci layout and that's pretty much it out of the box and you can't change it so and that is my first criticism is that there's no settings for this at all 
as far as I can tell. I've searched now several times and have not been able to find settings for the tiling functionality of Pop! OS. They just don't seem to exist. They're not in the, the standard settings app, they're not in the extensions application, and they're not anywhere located here. Right now, there are some things that you can change. So, for example, you can create basically what amounts to rules. So, if you've ever used a tiling window manager before, you can know most of them allow you to set rules so that certain applications function in a certain way. So, for example, if you want to have, say, like GIMP or something float, you could go through and do that. And the tiling, win the tiling functionality of Pop! OS has that functionality built in. So you could go through and create exceptions to the floating rules. So basically allowing things to float. And that's really cool. There's also several built-in ones that are automatically set to float by default. So that is basically the only settings that I can find that are actually exist. Now, the only other things that I did find, so let's go ahead and close a couple of these things with Super Q and open up the settings app. If we go down to keyboard and then customize shortcuts and then tiling, you can go through and customize some, I should say very few of the keyboard shortcuts. So if we actually go up here and open up the keyboard shortcut cheat sheet, we'll close this so you can actually see this. It, it tells you all the keyboard shortcuts that you'll need to know. And most of them are pretty intuitive. But the problem is of these, the only ones that you can change are these. Uh, and there's like what? five different keyboard shortcuts here and that's all you can change and there's way more than five keyboard shortcuts now that's not a huge deal because you can adapt to these keyboard shortcuts but one of the things about a tiling window manager that most people like is it allows them to make customizations to their keyboard shortcuts the not everybody prefers the same keyboard shortcuts and this is very restricting in that manner there's only so many you can change all the rest of them as far as i can tell are hard-coded and you can't change them. The other thing that bothers me, seriously bothers me, is that the super key pulls double duty. So you can see all these keyboard shortcut shortcuts are using super, which is the Windows key. Now, I don't have a problem with the Windows key being the meta key. It's the key that I use. It's the key that I think is probably the one that most people use, although I've heard from many people who use alt, but it really doesn't matter. Super is the one that they've chosen to use. And the problem is that it also pulls double duty in that it brings up the launcher. So sometimes if, if you let up on the super key when you're trying to do a key binding, that's going to come up when you're really sp wanting to do a key binding, like super key or something. Uh, it actually just did it there because it, it, it's finicky because that button is doing two different things. It's not all the time. It's just sometimes, and it kind of bothers me. The thing is, they could have changed it so that the Alt key was the Meta key in this case, or whatever, switched them around, it doesn't matter. I mean, I understand why Super Key works this way, because people who use GNOME are used to using the Windows key to access either a launcher or the app drawer or whatever. Usually the Super Key does something like that. So I can see why they have that, but it also does all those things that we just showed you, or I just showed you, for the tiling functionality. And a key doing double duty does not always work that well. It's always going to lead to some problems. Now, as we open up new clients, you'll see, if you, if you pay close attention, how some of the clients think they want to just open like up like normal, like in a random position on the desktop. And then they snap into whatever floating position they are. So you'll notice up here where the mouse is. If I open up a another terminal down here, that up there where the mouse just was, there was a, there's a flash of red, and then it goes down to where the floating where the next floating window should appear. I don't know whether or not that's something that Pop Shell always does, or if it's just a virtual machine thing, but it makes it feel not so smooth so it's not it's not like if we go into just dwm here and go into another workspace and then open up a ton of terminals it just is very smooth it just opens them up opens them up until you know you fill up the whole screen and there's no weirdness right and that's because this is meant to do tiling and you know it's not a huge deal of course but it does make it feel a little janky and that's where my final conclusion comes in a little bit is that it's better than I thought it would be 
It's better than I think it was when it first was announced, way back when. The problem is that it still, even after all this time, feels a little bit painted on, if you know what I mean. It feels like it's kind of, it, well, it feels like an extension. You know, it, a lot of GNOME extensions feel this way, like they are kind of weren't meant to be, like they were tacked on, that they're functionality that doesn't really kind of fit with the way GNOME is supposed to work. And that's the way this feels. It feels tacked on, and it feels hacky in some ways. Now, it's not as bad as like Cronkite. Cronkite and Plasma, from my very, very brief experience, I will freely admit that it was I only used it for maybe a few hours, but... In my experience during those few hours, it, that felt way more janky than this does. Like this is usable. Cronkite for me just wasn't. It, it had too many weird, weird things going on with certain windows, and Kitty spawns windows weirdly, anyways, unless you really dig deep into the settings, and it was a mess. The Pop OS one is way better than that, but it still felt janky to me. So. But the thing that bothered me the most wasn't the jankiness of it. Like, I could deal with that if I were going to use this. The problem that I have coming from a window manager, coming from a tiling window manager, is the lack of customizability. Like, the thing about window managers that is great is that you can get into the config files and you can change things, right? You can alter key bindings, you can alter rules, you can alter layouts, you can do all this stuff. And... As far as I can tell, that's not something that you can do with the extension for Pop! OS. Now, I will be completely honest and say that I did go through and search for a, a config file. Like, I went through and looked in .config, I looked in the home directory for hidden files. I didn't really go through the root directory all that much because I'm assuming that if there was something hidden there that you probably weren't supposed to mess with it. It's usually the rule. If, you, if it's in the root file, if it's, if it's in the root directory, don't mess with it unless you know what you're doing. So I didn't go messing around in there. So, so as far as I can tell, there are no configuration files for this extension. And there's no settings really either. There's just those few key bindings that you can change. And that's it. If I were a GNOME user, and I'd never used a tiling window manager before, this would be cool. But if, you're a t if you've used tiling window managers before, or even just floating window managers, anything like that, but you've had, you have experience with things that allow you to customize the crap out of them, this is not going to be for you, simply because there's just no customizability. And that's the, that's the bottom line, is that it's better than I thought it would be, but it's not for me because you can't customize it. And I would like to cut, at the very least, I'd like to say, hey, you want to know what? Let me change to a different key binding for this or this or this. And the fact that you can't do that makes it pretty much unusable for me. So in the comment section below, if you would tell me if you've used this tiling functionality and whether or not you enjoyed it or not, I'd really be happy to hear from you. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the Linux Cast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoo's Fun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack Snipe Tools, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Sean, Jeremy, Odin, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the Beasties, Rock, Peter A, Crucible, and Dark Bandit 6. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.